If you stop pouting, I'll buy you something, too. You can't buy my friendship with Dre- They have apple juice. Have I mentioned how great of friends we are lately? I smirk a little at Siori's playful antics, inserting two bells into the machine and clicking two buttons. The drinks soon pop out, and I reach over to hand Sayori her juice. You're drinking another soda? Uh, yeah. You already had like two today, though. Your point being? They're bad for you. Shouldn't you try and limit yourself? You're one to talk. You eat like you're eating for two. To further my point, I poke Sayori's, Sayori's stomach slightly with the bottom of her juice bottle before handing it to her. I think it would have to be her stomach, Sayori's. As the two of us stand there and sip our drinks, I make out some voices coming from the lockers. This floor was always the emptiest part of the school, but especially so after classes. Unlike the upper ones, there are no club rooms or activities here, housing nothing but a library, the faculty office, and some classrooms. However, today appears to be an exception to this rule, as I notice a small group of people huddled near the entrance with their phones. They are too far away for me to make out much, but I manage to hear the words guy and secret. Probably shit-talking some girl. Tough break for her. I managed to make out a seemingly unrelated conversation, though. I'm telling you, it's true. No one's seen him since he got stabbed. He's like, gone all hermit on us. I think I'd hide away, too, if some underclassman shanked me. How the hell do the people here get involved in stuff like this? Dismissing it from my mind, I throw away my can and continue the walk home with my now placated companion. The walk reaches its end quickly, and I wave goodbye to Sayori as I hop inside my house. Greeting me was the usual scene, an empty living room and a kitchen still littered with plates from previous nights. I take note of the lack of movement coming from the door pile lately, and start to worry about the possibility of a mouse corpse. I throw my bag onto the couch and head upstairs to change out of my uniform. The base of my chair creaks as I lean my weight towards the back. I sit there, staring at my cluttered desktop. However, I start to find myself drawn back to Sayori's words from earlier. I really have no friends, huh? It seems ridiculous for me, of all people, to be caught up on not having friends. So far, it's been a much better investment to keep out of the social circles of kids my age. But I can't quite erase this feeling in the pit of my heart. Ah, whatever. Leaning forward and clicking on some shortcut on my desktop, I decide to distract myself. Before long, I'm completely absorbed in my usual affairs. It's not that big of a deal, he said, trying to convince himself. The next day at school was the same as the one before it. Siori wouldn't be walking with me, as she was apparently busy looking for recruits. As I step into the hall, I catch a bit of two girls' conversation. You see that video of the girls camping like during lunchtime? Oh, the one with the girl in a bear costume? Yeah, I was actually there during her lunch. Really? Yeah, so get this. I'm just sitting there, talking to people, then this chick just steps up on a table, full of bear costume, and starts yelling about some club. And begin to worry immensely about her tactics. Pulling out my phone, I text her to come to my house after school so we can discuss her progress. While I'm at it, I begin to scroll mindlessly through a forum board as I make my way home. A small group of leftover students walks past me, and I catch a small bit of their conversation. Nah, Kamoka wasn't with us at all on Friday. I think she was hanging out with that new boyfriend of hers. Really? But she said she was what she said she was when I texted her last. Hmm. Huh. Distracted, I end up smacking my head into a wall, which snaps me back to reality. I also find that I've locked myself into the other half of the school, the blue half. How the... Siri's airheaded nature seems to have rubbed off on me slightly. I hope it's curable. Turning around, I start to make my way to the front entrance. To my left, I catch a glance at the library and stop in my tracks. The words from last night return to me, and they seem to cut even deeper than before. Before I realize it, I'm sliding open the door. I place my belongings near a chair and look around the room to see if anyone's here. It doesn't take me long to find no signs of people and my slight excitement flickers away. Unfortunately, the pit in my chest didn't go with it. I wonder if reading can distract me long enough. The shelves are littered with tons of books from famous authors. Among them, I find one titled David and Goliath. I'm not too sure what it is, but I'm fairly sure I've heard the name before, so I grab it. There. Word, words, there. 
Once sat down, I opened the pages and began to read. I'm so bored. This book seems to be nothing but extravagant words and case studies. It feels less like a book and more like a persuasive essay for English. Closing the book, I sighed to myself in frustration. Something like this won't be able to pull me out of my funk. I'll just go home and read some trash Malay manga. After returning the book, I reached for my bag and noticed something impressive. There has been a girl right in front of me this whole time. Am I losing it? I didn't see this chick at all. The girl doesn't seem to have noticed me either, and she is deeply engrossed in her book. Oh, she must be one of those unimpressive people, like me. The kind who just don't stand out at all. Must be one. But looking at her, her long hair flows down past her cheek and over the chair behind her, and her eyes are a deep violet. She seems to radiate an aura of maturity and tranquility. I can make out the faint scent of lavender as well. Her beauty is almost overwhelming, which makes it even more odd that I didn't notice her until now. Being so enraptured, I looked over another prominent feature. She's been staring at me, and I've been staring back, saying nothing. At all. Ah! Oh god, I couldn't read all that quickly enough. What am I doing just looking at her silently? How long have I been doing these, or this minutes? I must look like a total creep! Oh my, ah, kill me now! An endless amount of panic flushes throughout every single vein in my body, and it overwhelms even my smallest of motor functions, keeping me from looking away or even apologizing. I can only watch as her expression changes from confusion to embarrassment, then to slight fear. Her mouth slowly parts and she speaks up. Uh, excuse me, but is there something you need from me? Come on, say something! Just force out anything! You... Me? ...have gigantic breasts. God damn it. The girl's face quickly flares up, and she begins looking around hastily before reaching for her bag. She stuffs her book into it hastily, and quickly makes her way to the door. Oh, I'm sorry, but I need to go! With a ferocious amount of energy, she swings open the door and runs out into the hallway, leaving me in the quiet, empty library. The world around me slowly starts to spin, and I can feel the full force of gravity being exerted on my body. The combined embarrassment and anxiety caused me to send a sudden burst of weight towards the back of my chair. As a result, I have fallen onto my back. The floor is nice. I think I'll live here forever. I mean, what things do floors have to worry about? Being stepped on? Getting dirty? I can do all that. Yes, hello. I am Florison. I feel as if I have suffered a grave mental scarring. I'd say it took me around 10 minutes before I mustered up the courage to go home. Once at home, I silently crawled into bed and screamed into my pillow, cursing myself and my lack of social prowess for a solid hour. Then it took me another 30 minutes before I was able to conjure up the determination to leave my bed, but I've pulled through and sat myself in my computer chair. Turning on my monitor shows I fell asleep in the middle of a chapter. Right, I was reading this. As I briefly read over the page on screen, I realized I had completely forgotten the plotline. Scrolling up, I try and remind myself before I continue on. As I'm doing such, a certain page catches my eye. On it, a girl is dressed scantily and is attempting to subtly cover the exposed parts of her skin while also trying to pull off a confident smile, all with a huge blush on her face. I think I'm starting to like this series. All of a sudden, Sayori burst in and interrupted the dialogue box. I... All of a sudden, I chill runs down my spine, as if a malevolent spirit is slowly approaching. I oh, know, not I chill. Hey, you know, I came over just like you asked. Yeah, that sounds about right. From behind me, the door to my room swings open and reveals to me Sayori's bright radiance. The loud smack of the door against my wall causes me to jump out of my seat and be reunited with the floor. Hello, Sayori. What? Eh, what are you doing on the floor? Well. I had just decided to become a plank of wood when you walked in. I think you need to be skinnier to be a plank of wood. Harsh words aside, thank you for this enlightenment. Now, can you help me up? <laughs> All right, here. Siri bends down and extends her hand toward me. Towards me. As I try to grab a hold of her, though, her gaze quickly turns up towards my monitor and her hands move out of my reach. Her entire body seems to freeze for a few seconds and some beads of sweat run down my forehead once I remember what's currently in focus. Uh, I can explain. Siri reaches into her pocket and pulls out her phone. 911, what's your emergency? Yes, hello, 
Hello, I think my friend might be a pedophile. Knock it off. No, no, it's just I found some photos on his computer and... Hey, stop that. I don't need a police raid at my house. I quickly reached for her phone and managed to pry it out of her hands. The operator on the other side was probably extremely worried since there was so much yelling, but I managed to convince them that it was just a prank call. After being lectured by them, I have made my way back into my computer chair and Sayori's found a place on my bed. I close my tabs and spin around to face her. So why exactly did you feel the need to storm in here and threaten my public record? Hey, I only planned on the first thing. I didn't expect to learn that you're in the fifth graders. I'm not. Plus, she's 17 and not real. I don't think others will see it the same way. Oh, but that's not important. You said you wanted to discuss my recruiting Tic Tacs. Tactics. And yeah, I forgot I invited you over. So, how's it going? Any takers? Actually, yes. I got one person to agree to join. Really? So, bear recruitment is effective. What? Bear recruitment? Yeah, he went around in a bear costume and gave speeches, right? What? I never used a bear costume. I just went around and asked like normal. Why would I use a bear costume? What if the bear wasn't her? Or wait, if the bear wasn't her. What poor club has their own Sayori? I shake my head and try to drop the subject entirely from my mind. Er, never mind. Would you end up get- or who'd you end up getting? <laughs> <laughs> That's a secret! So you plan on gloating, huh? What? No, I didn't ruin the surprise if I told you! Surprise? Well, alright. No, Xiori, it wouldn't really be too shocking if the surprise ended up being that they didn't even exist. But looking at how excited she is, I have a feeling that's not the case. I'm definitely worried about it, though. Something tells me that I'll be lucky to be alive by the end of the week. Oh, hey, did you hear that our school might have a pervert? A pervert? Yeah, I heard about it on the way home. Apparently some guy was staring this girl down in the library and tried to hit on her. Someone got a video of the whole thing. There was another person here or there too. Siori, you've taught me something important today. Eh? Yeah. This world just hates me. Hmm? Oh! Maka said that she's found someone! That fast? Well, if the school idol asked something of you, I'm sure it'd be hard to turn her down. Mm-hmm. You know what that means. Tomorrow the literature club will have its first official meeting. My excitement is unparalleled. That's the spirit! The school day ends as quickly as it began. Before I had realized it, the final bell rang and Monica approached me and Siori to remind us about our first meeting. So here I am, in front of the club room without my other half, waiting for Monica to unlock the door. As I was walking here, Siori turned to me and said, Alrighty, you get up to Monica. I'm going to get our new club member. I can't help but feel a small bit of excitement in seeing who Sayori got, though it's not like I'll talk to them much. You don't need that comment there. Did you hear? Kazuya came back to school today. His face is totally messed up, though. Yeah, I caught a glimpse of the scar in chemistry. Honestly, it's kind of cool looking. Oh, God. Glad to hear he's okay. And to my side, I hear the unlocking of the club door, and out steps Monica, radiating her usual sense of grace. Oh, you're already here! I just got done talking to our newest member! This means I can finally meet them? Mm-hmm. Here, step on in! We can start introductions while we wait! Walking into the room, I catch a quick glance of Monica's bag, which appears to have something protruding out of it. However, what mostly catches my, my, my eye is the new member. Turning towards them, I met with... Oh, it's you. I'm getting tired of these constant punchlines. Immediately, my brain yells at me to turn around and hide, but Monica closed the door behind us, securing my escape route. Closed. <laughs> Hello again. I managed to muster up a meek voice and wave. Monica chimes in quickly. Oh, have you two already met? That makes introductions much quicker. W well, we've only exchanged a few words in the past. Then this is perfect. It's a chance to connect deeper with someone you've already been acquainted with. This is Yuri. I met her after school one day and asked if she was interested in joining our little club. It's nice to meet you. Yuri slowly extends her hands to offer an awkward handshake, 
which I return hesitantly. Yeah, it is. Um, would you mind telling me your name? Oh, oh, of course. My name is... Before I can finish, Monica jumps in. This is my lovely assistant. You can refer to him as secretary or anything of the sort. I have a real name, you know. All right. I hope we get along, Mr. Secretary. There it is. There's the name change. I thought it happened last time when they called him assistant, but no, it happens now. I feel like I'm being ignored. Monica giggles, amused with herself while Yuri looks around, probably uncomfortable with running into the guy who stared her down. All right. Well, before we get into club affairs, we should wait for Siori to get back. As Monica begins her speech, Siori slams open the door, bringing with her the usual amount of energy. And a girl. She immediately heads towards Monica. Hey, hey! I'm here! Sorry if I'm late! I had to help her find her way here! The girl behind Siori quickly retorts with, In other words, she got lost! Well, I told you to keep that secret! Siori, embarrassed at being exposed, pouts angrily at her friend. Monica completely ignores her, though, and walks over to greet the new face. Hello, I'm Monica, and welcome to our club. I assume you're the girl who Siri has been telling us about? Yeah, I guess I am. Thanks for having me, or something. The girl seems to be as put off by Monica's beauty as I am, and avoids staring at her directly, looking towards the ground. Well, you came at a good time. We had just finished our other introductions. Mind giving us your name? The girl seems a little uncomfortable with all the eyes on her, but she quickly throws that embarrassment aside and looks towards us all. My name is Natsuki. I'm a friend of Siori's. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Yuri. I'm new here as well. And the boy over there is the club's secretary. You're committed to that bit, huh? Siori, having recovered, joins the four of us. Whoa, you got promoted? Congratulations! Feels more like a demotion than anything. Monica snaps her fingers, bringing each of our eyes to her. She has made her way behind the teacher's podium. Now that everyone is here, we can finally begin the first official meeting of... of the Literature Club! Siri pumps a fist into the air and cheers. Yay! Yuri and Natsuki awkwardly follow along. Monica then looks to me expectantly. Uh... Come on, assistants! We're all club members now! You have to participate! Well, it's just that... Siori joins Monica in encouraging me, throwing another fist into the air. Yeah, join us! Natsuki and Yuri look towards me with expectant eyes and confused expressions. Hesitantly, I lift my arm and let out a small cheer. Yay! Alright, if I could have some help with- I'd need us to form a small table at a desk here. Siori, assistant? On it, Mrs. President- oh, Siori. On it, Mrs. President! Siori and I walk to the back of the room and start to arrange the desks into a makeshift table, with one desk facing the rest for Monica. Taking our places, we wait for Monica to give further instruction. Okay, you guys. Since we know each other's names, why don't we play a little introduction game to get ourselves more familiar with each other? After all, I want this club to be one where everyone is comfortable to be themselves. Looking around, it's clear Natsuki and Yuri are more than uncomfortable with this idea. They both are staring at Sayori, whose smile seems to be their once comfort, or their one comfort. Why did I read a C in there? Sounding a bit like a teacher, Monica. Why do you think they always insist on it, assistants? Even if you don't end up remembering any of the people there, it's much better to break the ice earlier on rather than sit awkwardly for a month. Well, I guess so. I scratch the back of my head, still extremely unsure about this idea. Monica continues on, reaching into her bag and pulling out a game die. Siori reaches next to her feet and grabs a cup containing labeled popsicle sticks. The rules of this game are very simple. Oop. Pardon me. I tried to press mute, and I ended up going to the pause menu. Each of us will take turns rolling a die, and the person with the highest number will pull a question out of the cup and read it out loud before answering it. A game of chance through and through. Sounds like Siori thought of this idea. In all the years I've known her, she's always had the most impeccable luck. Yuri chimes in. What if two people were to roll the same number? If that happens, then the two will roll again as a tiebreaker. Starting from Monica and going clockwise, we each are handed the die and roll it. The scores end up being... There they are! Yuri won this round. Lucky this time. Yuri, realizing her defeat, Looks, o er, looks over towards the cup, 
She seems to meditate on which to, er, which to stick to pull before reaching forward and slowly pulling one out. She begins to read it out. Why did you choose the literature club? Hmm. Well, when Monica approached me and told me about the club's premise, I thought the concept was very appealing, so I agreed to attend the first meeting. There isn't really an in-depth explanation. I apologize. It sounds a lot nicer than how you already convinced me. Looking suspiciously at Siri, I press for further detail. Oh yeah? What do you mean? Well, she told me about this place on Tuesday and asked if I wanted to join. I said no, but then she came back the same day, this time approaching me at lunch. Finally, she startled me while I was washing my hands earlier today, so I agreed to get her off my back. Monica giggles nervously and gives Natsuki an apologetic smile. So she was lying yesterday. I apologize on behalf of my pet. Hey! It's not as bad as it sounds. Yuri, you believe me, right? Well, er... Well, uh, Yuri, not you too! Natsuki laughs at Siri's pathetic display, while Yuri tries to fend off Siri's pressing. <laughs>